Okay, uh, back in the ski shop again here today, and uh, kind of a, a mess here, I guess, but uh, I got everything I need here to trick out the skis. Got all kinds of stones here, and ceramics, and uh, other types aluminum oxides or whatever anyway got all that good stuff uh so anyway uh what i want to talk to you about today and try to show you guys today is uh how to renew an old ski base okay so uh, i got these skis at the end of last season and uh it's a high quality centered base it's a it's a race type ski and uh, and I did wax it down good last year and hot boxed it a couple times. But even though I did that, what's happened is is the base is old and it's dried out, and so it's not absorbing the wax anymore. Okay, so the first thing that you do before you uh, do it the way I do it, which is I'm going to scrape to renew the base. Now you can see where I've done the long base bevel. That's what I call a long bevel. You see right along where I've filed and polished the base edges along the side of that, you see where the plastic looks different. It looks blacker. Okay. And that goes down each side, see. Okay. So that's the first thing that you got to do. Hang on, I got somebody at the door. Stand by. Okay, so we had a little minor interruption there. Um, my neighbor, the A-man, came over. He needed to borrow the pump. He had a tire that was getting low. So anyway, why uh, do we need to do this or want to do this? Well, this is a, a high-quality centered base. I think I was right around there somewhere. And uh, it wasn't taking the wax because what happens is like this was an old used ski and so it sat around for probably quite a few years uh, without storage wax on it and even storage wax needs to be scraped off you know at least two or three times a year or something and reapplied so to prevent the base from from drying out so that's pretty good here you can see where it's white and then again where I did the long bevel you can see where it's blacker see okay so I'll show you another example of you know the the plastic doesn't technically oxidize like we always talk about it oxidizing and all that and uh, anyway it's still referred to as an oxidized base or whatever but uh, it's just basically it's more a function of plastic uh, drying out you know okay so look at it that way, it's like dried out. We need to remove that dried out part as much as possible to get the base to reabsorb wax again. So I'll show you a little example of dried out plastic standby. Okay, so here's one of these plastic shovels and it had been laying outside for like a long time. And uh, I wanted to slide down the parking lot in it, you know, or slide on the snow in it. So I had to take that old dried up plastic off. So you see how much different that looks where I scraped it, see? So, you know, because, it, okay, so I got my scraper, and what you want to do is see all that old dried up crap. See? The plastic does dry up, and it loses its freshness, and, and that will prevent that absorption of wax. So, uh, anyway, stand by. We'll go back in the shop and get busy. Okay, check that out. That's where I just scraped that shovel. You check this out it is like powder see it is like dried up old powder you know but anyway that's not exactly the same kind of plastic that's on a ski base but anyway it gives you the idea what happens to plastic that is not protected stand by okay uh, there are different types of steel scrapers uh, there's most of what you're going to find is going to be stainless steel or this one is a carbon steel and as you can see it's got uh, wax and junk all over it and what I want to do is, is 
sharpen this file up or I'm sorry sharpen this this up first thing I'm going to do is just clean this edge a little bit with uh, some coarse fiber pad to just kind of break the wax down off the edge while I sharpen it so that I don't clog up my file with the uh, with the wax as I put a little edge on this puppy so I'm going to go ahead and put a little edge on on both sides and uh, won't take it too long just with this coarse fiber pad just kind of scrub it really good you don't have to get all the wax off you know every speck of it because uh, we're just going to be working the, the edge of it you see now I'm I'm starting to get the the wax the wax cleaned right off the very edge where I'm going to work on it what I'm trying to do here is get this puppy sh back to nice good and sharp after you use a scraper a while carbon steel or stainless you know it is going to eventually dull somewhat okay and a dull steel scraper is, is fine. It's really good for scraping off wax without doing too much extra peeling of the base material. But in this case, I really do want to peel some material. So uh, uh, the way that I sharpen these is uh, here. I got a file on the table and I've cleaned the, the file or, you know, pretty much anyway, made sure that I, I've uh, brushed the file out. And I'm not real super concerned about it being exactly 90 degrees, but what I do is I just hold on to the file one place or the other, take the scraper, put it down flat on the file, and just start drawing it back. And just try to be careful not to tilt it this way too much or tilt it this way. Uh, this It usually ends up being not perfect, okay, straight, but it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect straight uh, because there's a little flexibility in it anyway. That's where you get the art, the artist, the art, the artistic part of it comes in when you're scraping. When you, anyway, we're just gonna draw it. it won't take too many times. Now I'm gonna turn it around the other way and draw it a couple more times across the file, trying to hold it as flat as I can. Shouldn't need too much more, but a few more passes here. Trying to hold it down just, you know, as flat as I can. And again, it's it's not going to be super perfect square. A lot of your ski bases aren't perfect square either. So now I'm going to get the other side. I'm going to repeat the process. One thing I like about the carbon steel scraper is it files and sharpens easier than a stainless steel scraper. And there are different grades of stainless steel as well, but... Okay, another interruption there. So I gotta take this up, but anyway, okay, so here we go. So that's how I sharpen that, that before we start doing the scraping. Okay, so I finished uh, sharpening up the scraper, and now we're going to get to work. I'm going to start scraping this puppy. Now, one thing about sharpening the scraper, I don't need burr it. It's going to be a little bit burry, microscopically, and as we scrape this ski, we're going to definitely be scraping linear lines into the ski, and those will act as structure, okay? And, uh... So anyway, we don't worry when we see the, the scratchy lines. And I don't know if you'll be able to see that in the video or not. But anyway, going to get started here. So this, the scraper's got four edges, two edges per side. We're going to run them all down there. First pass I'm going to make, I'm going to keep my pressure real square to the center of the ski. Okay, now 
the ski is not waxed, okay? Now see all this stuff? That's base material right there. Anyway, I never know, like you always hear me say how it looks on the little screen. It's hard to tell, but there's all this stuff, okay? That's just one pass, okay? So now we're going to keep doing this. Now, I'm going to go down the center again, trying to hold my, my scraper really square. And again, a lot of junk, okay? A lot of junk. Now, a lot of the tails and the tips of skis are, are tapered. You know, they, they're they a little bit boat shaped at the tips and tails. And what that does is it's kind of like a permanent detune without detuning it. Those tapered tips and tails help to keep those initial edges lifted up off the snow a little higher so that in, they won't catch until you tip the ski up on edge and then the edges are going to engage and you're going to get a solid turn. So anyway, so when you get near the tails and the tips, you actually do apply a little more pressure, you know, to that outside edge, edges. So there's a little uh, artisanship that goes into this, but each time that you draw your pull, don't be going back and forth in any weird directions. You know, if you're going to go down this side, you stay down this side the whole way and keep it in the same place. So, okay, here we go again. Going to put a little more pressure to this to this edge this time. Okay, didn't get a lot of material that time. A little more pressure to the other edge of the ski. Okay, didn't get a lot, a lot of material that time. Okay, so now I've, I've, I've scraped it with this edge right here a couple of times. Now I'm going to turn it over and grab the other edge. And what you find is oftentimes one side of the scraper will be way sharper than the other. Okay, I'm going to come down the center. And also the angle. Okay, we're still getting material. The angle that you hold it. So whether you hold it straight, real straight up, or you tilt it, or maybe you apply just a teeny bit of flex to it will make a difference. But once you start to scrape from the tip of the ski, if you're holding it like this, keep it like that for the whole stroke. If you have it real straight up and down, keep it that way for that whole stroke each time. Okay? So now I'm just going to hold it at a different angle. Really come down. Oh, we're getting junk there. We're getting junk for sure. Okay. Now I'm going to rotate the scraper again. Okay. Definitely getting the junk there. Okay. You don't need to remove a lot, a lot of material oftentimes to, ooh, yeah, look at it off that edge that time. Look at all that stuff. It kind of, it kind of got a little static to it. So it wants to stick to the, to the dang glove, to, to the, anyway, it wants to stick, so. Okay, so, getting better, feeling better about this. Now, if you have a ski that's got a concavity to it, you're not really going to get into that concavity. Oh yeah, getting material here. But this will literally help to flatten the ski again as well, okay? Just like the grind might. Okay, we're getting plenty of material here. Working that tail a little bit back and forth to each side where she's tapered. Working the tip edge, the sides a little bit where they're tapered. So we 
come to this center portion of the ski, it's going to be really flat. Now this ski's got a little bit of a concavity right from there to there. And you can see it in the color and the shininess as you do this that it's not really scraping right there, okay? But anyway, if you've got a ski that's got a concavity to it, you know, you're not going to get that completely out and don't worry about it, uh, you know. But if you have a, a big hole or a concavity in a ski, that's where you can get your suction, you know, which slows you down. But anyway, a ski doesn't have to be perfectly flat. It's got to be reasonably flat. And it should be flat on the outer thirds, we'd call it. So in other words, like... From there to the edge, from there to the edge, you know, that, that would be relatively flat and that center could still have a little bit of a low spot and it would be okay. So, okay, so feeling pretty good about that, but I'm going to really scrape it down. Really, really pull some material off. The other thing, yeah, we're getting some stuff now. The other thing is... Uh, is well it's just keep scraping ah uh, oh yeah that's what i was trying to say okay this is to renew and open up a centered base key but this can also this scraping technique can be used on an extruded base it's not going to help it absorb more wax because an extruded base isn't going to absorb wax anyway but this is a way that if you got a ski that's that's pretty scratched up that you can remove the high spots on those scratches and that'll make the ski go or board go faster and smoother again as well so this is also a technique that even if the, the base material is not old and dried up it's a technique that you can use to smooth this the, the base back down again Okay, so just gonna work this puppy a little bit more. Don't be afraid. Keep your stroking as linear as possible. And the linear scratches are just like a linear grind. And a linear grind is used mostly for downhill racing. As opposed to a diamond cut or a cross grind, you know, that makes the ski a little rotate maybe a little bit easier. But these aren't going to be really deep scratches, lines, but they're going to be enough to give it some structure. So structure is what's going to break the suction. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. But... I usually, even when I say it's pretty good, I always go a little more. Oh yeah. Now, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but we're seeing a lot of lines, a lot of scratchy lines. And that's, that's good. Okay. Now, one reason I like doing it this way is if I take it to a shop and have somebody run it through a grinder, that is going to uh, cost me a lot of money. And grinding a ski actually can cause what's called creep in the plastic and not shave it off as cleanly and mush the plastic around in a microscopic way where it actually can make the ski less open or, or less you know ability to to take the wax in but here we can see base material that I've taken off of that ski I've literally scraped off okay 
that's what you want to do. You want to get that junk off of there. So pretty good, but like I say, even when I say I think it's pretty good, I usually go a little bit more. Now, as you're doing this, if you start coming in contact with the edge of the ski that you've totally, you know, buffed off and you feel it start going or you feel a little clickety clackities from your base edge that means well, a couple things one thing, you, you, you're you coming down and you're hitting the edge again now and the other thing it means is that the interface between the plastic and the edge itself has still got some microburrs there in which case you're better to take a wet diamond stone and, and do this, but this is an old, old one, and I'll just show you dry what I would do is I'd take this diamond stone, hold it flat on the base, and I would run it up and down. And you do this with some fluid, like you see me, you know, using fluid. And run that, just, you're not trying to make a bevel now, you're just kind of holding it flat. And you're applying pressure and you're going back and forth down that down the edge and what you're doing is you're taking off those little burrs that are not on the outside of the edge but rather the little burrs that again that 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 are where the interface of the edge and the plastic are so thus we hold it flat and we rub the base with the diamond stone Okay, so that's how, okay, so it's kind of a process. So as you're doing this, sometimes you go back and forth. Okay, and after you're done doing this, you can always come back with your base beveler tool and uh, go ahead and work on that base bevel again now after you've done this, if you want to, if you need to. Okay, we're coming in there pretty good now. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Definitely see where the taper on the tail is. Going to go ahead and work over those edges by applying just a little more pressure toward the edge of the ski, gently, carefully. And this is something, you know, it does take a little practice to do. Uh, a good way to practice this is to get an old ski that's been laying around for eons, you know, that maybe you don't even want to use that ski ever again, you're never going to ski it, but it's a good, uh, get get an old ski and practice on it a little bit, and you know, you're not going to freaking ruin your ski, you know, if you're gentle with it. Okay, well, I think, I think that's good enough, okay. And uh, like I showed you, all the pile of the base material that I peeled away. Feeling pretty good about that. Grab this dry, old, waxed up, full of crap diamond stone. Just run down this other one once. Kind of deburr that interface a little bit. Okay, good enough for there. Okay, so now that's all done. The next thing I do is because I'm not grinding a structure into the ski. There's already a pretty good linear structure from the light scratching, you know, that's imparted in it by the slightly burred scraper, which is good. This is what we want. Now, a real deep structure for spring wet snow is better, and a less uh, a deep structure, a very light structure, is better for cold, dry powder. So what I'm going to do now is now I have a, a stiff stainless brush, okay? It's called a stiff stainless steel. I don't think Beast is even making these anymore, this stiff stainless, and I don't know why, but you can find these uh, from another manufacturer that maybe, I don't know, but this stiff stainless steel, I mean, this puppy is stiff and it's hard. And this thing will literally scratch the ski, okay? 
and that's exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to impart more structure in here now and remove additional dried up material. I'm pressing extremely firmly, very hard, overlapping my passes a little bit. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to make four or five passes right here. Now when you're up at your tips, remember there's a little taper, so you're going to tilt your brush a little bit this way. Then you're going to tilt it a little bit this way on your tips and tails, but mostly you're just going to stay flat, you know, down the center of the ski. Rotating the brush around a little bit, you know, grabbing different portions of the brush. Okay. Now, really starting to look better now. Stiff stainless steel is what you use after you did grind your ski to mellow that grind and smooth it out a little bit. You get a little, what we call microstructure into the ski. Okay. pressure with the stiff stainless. Now this will not work with the soft stainless. It will not work with a with the bronze, copper, or brass really. You've got to have a very stiff, very stout stainless steel brush like this to do this. The more you do this, the better the structure's going to get. Structure's looking real good now. I'm feeling really good about this. Okay. Okay. Now, after you do that, it's optional. You don't have to do this. But, uh, it's not pulling up any hairs, okay? The base hasn't gotten hairy or anything like that from doing this, but if you want, you could take a piece of coarse fiber pad now. This is a coarse fiber pad, the maroon color. Lay it on the ski. Take a flat file, something you know is flat. Lay it on top of the fiber pad. Okay, hold it all together. And with a fairly firm pressure, go ahead and make a couple passes back and forth. Okay. Now, if there was any little micro hairs, okay, this coarse fiber pad will cut them off. We're talking microscopic here, but you know, a lot of the things that make a ski run well, <coughs> excuse me, are microscopic. Okay. So now that we buffed it with the coarse fiber pad backed with the file, uh, that did remove a microscopic amount of material and that goes into the structure crack. So now we're going to clean those. This is a soft stainless steel brush. It's a much, a much finer bristle than the coarse one. So it's going to move down into the little cracks and clean them out. Okay. Don't need to go crazy on this. So when you're brushing, brushing is a progression, just like your diamond stones, like you go from a coarser one to a finer one to a finer one to a finer grit. Okay. So now I'll move on, hit it with this bronze brush once. Bronze brushes tend to polish a little more. Okay, and that's just cleaning, cleaning it off. Now we're going to take a brass, 
which is a really nice fine bristle. This will be the last brushing. Always brush from tip to tail with your steels and your brasses and your bronzes. And like I say, I don't know what the skiers do go both directions. If they brush it both directions, anyway, we don't worry about that. The skiers still <laughs> go switch really fast, but they get real technical about, you know, the glide of a ski. That's why you recommend you brush from tip to tail or the direction of travel, you know. Okay. And again, that gets down to microscopic, uh, you know, things. Okay, so there we go. So now we've done that, the ski's ready to wax. And uh, take a lint-free wiper. You know, now you're getting technical again. But, you know, you take that lint-free wiper and just kind of go over the ski and wipe it off one more time. Okay, so that's it. I have renewed the base on this old ski. And it, although it's an old ski, it's a very high quality centered base and I do need to open it up so that it'll take that wax in and it won't dry out. Now when people talk about uh, skis that have base burn, that's when you see the little white part and it looks fuzzy, they call that hairy. This is the same thing that you have to do, what you just saw me do to repair that condition. Even if it's just down each edge of the worked area of the ski. So, uh, I've heard it said that, you know, you can remove base burn by applying a layer of hard wax and then coming back with a sharp, uh, even just a plastic scraper, as long as it's nice and sharp. Anyway, and then scrape off that hard wax and then they'll tell you that'll scrape off those hairs. Well, I'll tell you what, it doesn't work. I mean, yeah, you might scrape off the hairs a little bit of, of the ski, but then you'll re-wax it, and you'll ski it a couple days, and you go, crap, man, that spot's just dried up again. It already looks white again. Well, that's because you literally have to take off a little more base material to renew it, okay? So now uh, we'll pull down the other ski, and uh, we'll set them side by side on the bench. I'll pull the camera off the tripod, and we're going to take a look at the difference of the ski that has been scraped to renew and open the base versus the ski that has not been worked on yet. Okay. And you might be able to see right now the difference, but I mean, I don't know until I process the video. I never know how this stuff looks. So stand by. Okay, here we go. Now you can clearly see, or at least I can see right now on the screen, so I think this can come out okay. Uh, this ski here has been scraped off to renew, and this one has not. Eh, it depends on the reflection of the light in my shot. But Okay, so this is the ski that I scraped off to, to renew. And this is the ski that I have not scraped off to renew yet. So, you see the difference in the color? A lot of difference. Now, this may not look super shiny right now. Yeah, because it's dry. But it's scraped down to new base again. Not like this one. See? So now when I go to wax this puppy and put it in the hot box... Is she going to suck up wax really good again? It's going to be like brand new. And maybe better than new because I've taken some of the warpage out, etc. by renewing it. And you see, there is plenty of structure in that. See? Plenty of structure. It's all linear. Ah, I'm getting all messed up with my camera here. But anyway, you can see. Okay, see that? There's plenty of structure. And that is going to run well. It's going to run really good. Okay, so there you go. Now all i got to do is finish the other one. This is the other one. We'll be in business, but you can clearly see a Z de France. A Z de France. Okay, so there you go. Renewing an old dried up ski that's been sitting around with the centered base to get it to reabsorb wax again. Same thing you do when you got base burn. Okay? And to prevent the base burn, okay, once you've done this, you got to keep the damn ski waxed. Okay, catch me a while ago.